Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Coke and Strippers. We have fun with electronics. All right, today we've got something pretty cool going on. So you might as well go ahead and like it right now. I got a new box from the internet. I got this box from the internet. Oh, and what does it say on the side? I've been looking for this for a while. Um, I got it in my mind that I wanted an old style uh, speech synthesizer. One with this very special chip, the, the SE-01 or 01A. And I've been looking for them for a while on the internet. And finally one came along at a price I thought I could deal with. And so, here it is, the Microbox. There are a bunch of different synthesizers that come with that chip. This happened to be the first one that popped up. But look, you know, normally I'm not a, hey, keep things in the box kind of guy. Uh, if I get a toy, I take it out, I play with it. I don't care about the box. But it's kind of cool that this thing, that somebody kept the box and this thing came with, with, with an original, an original box. All right, let's see if we can zoom out a little more. So, original foam. What does this thing look like? All right, so we've got a power supply, wall wart, uh, 22 volts AC. Hmm. All right, a little strange, but you know. And we have the Microbox. Woo -hoo. Microbox text to speech synthesizer. FCC sticker, mm. 1982 Microbox. Input a, look, this power supply is attached. It's like you can't. All right. Well, anyway, this is what we've got. Uh, the ad said they didn't know if it worked or not, so we're hoping for the best. Uh, on the back here, we've got uh, what looks like a serial port and a parallel port. 25 pin den for for you new players that haven't seen these kinds of things before. And this is what I suspect is a speaker jack. A lot of these don't have any kind of built-in speaker. One of the other cool things that, that, that came with this though, it's all listed in the ad, which is one of the reasons why I really like this one, is look, it comes with a manual. Woohoo! And not only a manual, I mean, yeah, it's a manual, but, 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 look, it even has schematics, right? So, even if it is screwed up, it gives us a much better chance of, of fixing it. So, we've got a, a schematic, we've got parts list, if something goes wrong, um, I'd say we could build another one, but we will, we'll never find that, that chip. It was, they quit manufacturing this thing, I don't know, 20... 30 years ago so you can't get it anymore but so we've got all of the um, all the information on the circuit and here so one of the cool things about this one is oh man back in the day it has a built-in computer in it it's got a 6502 processor so it does more than than what the chip would do so the chip by itself you'd send it phonemes uh, to make up a word here, like a list of the phonemes and what they sounded like, what you know, the sample word they would be in for the phonemes. But this one includes a, a microcontroller and it has a dictionary, at least a small dictionary. I don't know, maybe a few hundred words, I think. Yeah, so here I, I'm assuming this is the dictionary they have in there. So that each of these words are already divided out into phonemes, and if you use these words, it has a pretty good, you know, it can pretty pretty well take just this text and do a text-to-speech. All right, so let's see if this thing works. What do we have for uh, for input? Well, let's see. We've got an RS-232 serial port and a parallel input port. Again, that stuff is almost impossible to read even in real life, so on the camera. Um, so that's cool. Now, RS-232, RS-232 can mean a lot of different things. So with a device this old, I want to be careful. I think I want to run this from an Arduino. <clears throat> and 
Uh, an Arduino, the, 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 the large cheap Unos you can pick up for a few bucks uh, from your favorite places in China, um, they run at 5 volts. Now, RS-232 can be plus and minus 15 volts or, 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 or more. Um, and a matter of fact, it used to be that, that kind of uh, voltage. And, you know, so with, with an old device like this, the voltages may be too high, so I need to take a look at that. Uh, but yeah, the RS-232 standard could be like plus or minus 15 or plus or minus 12. That's why like on old PCs you'll see a minus 12 uh, on the power supply. Uh, maybe plus and minus 5 or 5 and 0 for some of the newer stuff, which is easier to deal with a 5 volt. So let's see if we can figure out what this thing looks like. This is, so it looks like the input buffer here is an MC1489. All right, well, maybe that'll, that'll tell me what I'm looking for. Let's see what we can find out about one of those. Okay, so here's a data sheet just went on the internet and found this MC1489. Uh, what do we see? Input voltage range, plus or minus 30 volts. Hmm. So it'll handle up to plus or minus 30 volts. Um, input turn on voltage threshold minimum at one volt maximum at 1.5 volts so that's cool I can drive I can drive this input um, with a 5 volt supply and the turn off what it calls low voltage low is 1.25 to, to 1.75 volts that or lower should be um, the, the low voltage threshold. So I can I can run this with, with a five volt Arduino very, very well. Seems a little weird that these voltages overlap. <laughs> this turn off threshold is 1.25 and the turn on is 1.0. I mean, they're for different ranges, but uh, you know, usually you try to put a gap in between there, but that's fine. I, I should be able to drive down really close to zero and up really close to five. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. And it accepts that, so, but what does it put out? So the Arduino is a really cool, uh, a really rugged platform, um, but still it doesn't, you know, a high voltage, 30 volts it would not be happy with, especially probably negative 30. But the output high is minimum 2.5 volts, uh, five volts. So perfect, this thing is set up to do five volts in and out. That's great. Uh, we see max input current 8.3 milliamps. So I just want to be a little careful, particularly hooking these things up. Like the uh, again, older electronics generally won't source or sink very much current before before it fries. The Arduino is fairly nice in that regard. You get like I don't know 20 milliamps, 40 milliamps. Um, so I just want to be careful not to smoke this thing. All right. So other than that, we are good to go. Excited. All right, so the next thing to communicate with this device, we figured out the voltage levels and they're in spec. Now we got to figure out um, what the what the data framing is like and, and the actual connection. So it says internally there are some jumpers, uh, J1, that'll set this thing to DTE or DCE, uh, sort of which end of the communication it expects to be on. Uh, used to have a terminal and a modem and uh, the TX has to go to the RX and the RX to the TX. So you can change those. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, you set the data rate with a dip switch. Um, and you set the, the rest of the formatting with another dip switch. The word length, parity, stop bit. So, you know, most stuff now is sort of, uh, you see like 8 in 1 if you're used to doing serial stuff. That's uh, 8 bits. Uh, in the in the frame uh, in is no parity you could have even parity or odd parity that lets you know if there's an error during the transmission but most things run eight in one now in is no parity and one is one stop bit that that's what happens at the end of the frame you'll have a start bit your frame uh, a parity a stop bit um, and the start and stop bit since this is an asynchronous protocol that's what allows you to sync up the communication like if you were sending a million ones and then sent a zero uh, it would be hard to clock 
uh, your clocks would have to match very carefully to figure out which bit was the zero. Is that bit you know 20,000 or bit 20,001? But with the start and stop bits, that gives you a location uh, to see a very definite clock pulse that that you can um, that you can realign on. All right, so let's uh, figure out what the communications on this is going to be. To get in, we've got a, a couple of screws here at the bottom. All right, the two jumpers we were talking about are here. They are both set for DCE. That's fine. Um, this dip switch controls the baud rate. Um, what is that? Like 150, 300. It's hard to read those. 600, 1200 something 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 um, that's set for 300 baht which is probably fine but it sounds a little slow to me these days let's go with 1200 um, and over here uh, six seven and eight are the um, oops, six seven and eight are the uh, protocol word length, parity, stop bits, that kind of thing. So now you see this says on and off or off on the side and on. So this is off, on, on. Um, they use a slightly different um, uh, definition here in the manual. They use closed and open. So you just have to realize that uh, closed is the switch is closed, in this case meaning on, uh, and open is off. So we have um, off, on, on for those three bits. Um, open, close, closed. That's uh, eight bits, no parity, two stop bits. The Arduino serial drivers aren't very sophisticated and you can pretty much only do eight in one. So I need to change this to eight bits and one stop bit. So that'll be open, open, closed. I need to change position seven. So we'll take the little over here. There we go. So now we should have 1200 baud, eight in one DC. I think we can, I think we can deal with that. All right, so got it plugged up. Look for the magic smoke. Beautiful, we've got a red light. I think that, that that's a very good sign. All right, now huh, I've got some external computer speakers here. You know, standard old stuff. Somewhere they have an audio plug. That would be here. Yeah. Shut the computer. Oh. Ready. <laughs> ha. That's that that that's very cool. Ready. So I know that that all the basics are working. Like like this thing is probably probably completely functional. I really like that they have some kind of output that shows the thing is functioning. So that's very nice. All right, now it's time to do a little Arduino setup. All right, so I've got the Arduino ready. Um, I added a couple of of 1K resistors to these I/O lines. It's just a good practice. If I were to get the directions uh, confused, TX and RX, and it's hard to do. I mean, sorry, it's easy to do because when you're thinking TX on this side, is that TX? No, that's RX. Anyway, it's really easy to get messed up. So I want to keep the current down so that I don't risk blowing up um, either of these devices. So I've got a TX and an RX, and then you have to have a, a common ground. So that's the ground. Uh, I look up the, the pin IO in... Um, 
in the manual. So I know that this is ground and TX and RX. And I wrote a little, uh, a little bit of Arduino code, which we click upload, loads to the Arduino. And let's see, we can. It's ready. It's ready. All right, here we go. Friends in there are 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 friends in there are. Okay, so that's saying frame in error, frame in error, which is not what I was uh, outputting from here, but that's very cool. So um, it's saying that the framing is screwed up between here and there. Um, but the diagnostic, <laughs> it's cool to have a diagnostic, and since you've got voice output, you might as well say what's wrong, and it's not understanding the framing. So uh, I'm going to take a look and figure out what's going on with that. Alright, so I had a good hard look at what was going on and the signals were inverted. So in the Arduino, you can put a common one at the end of software serial. I'm using the software serial port here uh, instead of the hardware serial, which is used for programming on the USB. So pick the software serial, got a couple of pins, and away we go. Let's upload this new code. Let's turn on... Ready. What do we get? Stand your money on toad and strip first, toad and strip first, toad and strip first. <laughs> Spend your money on coke and strippers. Well, that's Diet Coke and wire strippers. Spend your money on toad and strip first, toad and strip first, toad and strip first. So that's our fun for today with this Microvox text to speech synthesizer. Spend your money on toad and strip first, toad and strip first, toad and strip first. <laughs> and an Arduino Uno giving you some good advice. Go spend your money on Coke, Diet and money strippers. On toad and strip first, so you can have fun with electronic projects first, like this. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, like it, subscribe, tell all your pals. Spend your money on toad and strip first, toad and strip first, toad and strip first.